Hi, everybody. My go-to person for all things computer science is America's digital goddess, Kim Commando. And I'm sure she's your go-to person as well. She recently had an article, One Change That Instantly Makes Your Computer Safer. She bases it on a memo from Microsoft that an attacker who successfully exploited these vulnerabilities, we don't really care what vulnerabilities these are right now, could gain the same user rights as the current user. The key part is gain the same user rights as the current user. So her suggestion is that the account we use in our everyday life shouldn't have administrator privileges. We should reserve that administrator account when we absolutely need it. So a step down from authority of Kim Commando, we can look at the University of Pennsylvania, who says the same thing, basically. Six things that can be done to secure a Mac. Number one, have a standard account for daily use. So don't use administrative access accounts every day. Again, because if there is some exploit and they get your rights, at least they won't have access to everything. And the same thing from Mac World. I will keep my Mac safe from other users. Use admin accounts for administration only. So you can find this almost everywhere. It's kind of common sense knowledge off on the web. So this is called the principle of least privilege, that a user or process should have the lowest level of privilege required in order to perform his or her assigned task. So again, Microsoft, back to Microsoft, says that running in standard user mode gives customers increased protection against inadvertent system level damage caused by shatter attacks and malware, such as rootkits, spyware, and undetectable viruses. So it's again a common sense approach used really everywhere. So even in the intelligence community where there's this idea of compartmentalization, you know it's the need to know basis. What you know is only the stuff required for you to do the job. You don't know whatever Mr. X is doing in Kirkmanistan or something. It's also looking at uh, object-oriented classes. We've had this idea of encapsulation, that we're going to expose the stuff within an object, just expose the stuff that's needed for other objects to do their job and hide the stuff that's not important. And it leads to better security, as we've been talking about, and better stability. So it's true for database servers as well. So your Flask app needs to log into the database server. And because your Flask app needs to log into a database server, it's going to use the root. If you use the root account, that means the root password and username are stored in your code. So if you screw up in some way, if your code, your code can destroy all the databases on the server, so you've made some mistake in your code and all of a sudden you're deleting stuff where it has that potential, or that there could be a malicious attack on your code, or you could do something really stupid like submit your code to GitHub to public GitHub and people can see the username and password. So that would compromise all the databases on the server. It would be an extreme embarrassment if that's if your first day on your job you did that, submitted something on GitHub with these passwords in it. So the solution is to create an account with the least privilege required to do the task. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. How can we create accounts on our database server, Postgres, that we can give only the privileges that it this user requires to do the job. The incentive in the class, in order to kind of get you ingrained in doing this without thinking, the first thing you do is make these, these least privileged users, rather than use the root account, is that if you submit code or demo code that uses the root Postgres account, you will get zero XP. Pretty decent incentive. All right, so let's see how we can go about and do this. Let me just, ah, I always screw up there. Let me clear this stuff up here. All right, and now I'm going to log in to Postgres as the user Postgres, so the root account. And that's my secret password. All right, so now I can look at what the databases are. They're the same as last time. I didn't add anything, so I have charts and pets. And now I'm going to create what's called a role, so a different user that's going to have fewer privileges than, than me. And the way I'm going to do that is say create role, and I'm going to name this user Swift, if I can. And I've created a role. I can look at all the ro roles that exist by going backslash du. So I've created this one. This person can't even log in. And I have this my 
Postgres account, which can do really basically everything. I'm a super user. I can create roles. I can create database. And I can do like pretty much whatever I feel like doing. Swift can't do anything, can't even log in. Let's get rid of Swift. So to get rid of a role, I just say drop role Swift. All right, let me now add Swift back, but this time give um, Swift login privileges. So I can say create role Swift with login. Now if I look at the users, you see it doesn't say can't log in as it did before, but Swift can actually log in now. That might be useful for people. Let me do a create role mm, DB man, no, pet man. Okay, now I have three users, the Postgres admin account, Swift who can log in, and pet man who can't. So you can alter a role so they can log in. You can just say alter role pet man with login. Okay, so now both can log in. So you can either create it, the role with the login, or you can, if you forget, you can always do this alter role. Okay, let's give a password to Swift. That might be handy. So it's this command that we've seen before. And I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good password. Okay, now in order to give privileges to Swift, uh, we give privileges to tables in a database. I need to be in the table I want to give privilege, privileges to, or to a database. So I'm going to change the database to charts. And remember, the table I have here is called top songs. So I'm going to grant all permissions to that table to Swift. And I can look what privileges exist in the data by looking by doing backslash C. So I can see that top songs, this table, the access privileges are Postgres that can do everything and Swift that can do everything. I can do all sorts of things like I can just grant select privileges so the person can't insert stuff but can look at the stuff on top songs to Petman. And now I'll do backslash Z and see Petman has read access to Postgres, Swift has everything and Postgres is everything. So let's log out. All right, and now I'm going to log in as Swift. So user, whoops, Swift, and the database I want to connect to is charts. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so now I'm in charts. Um, top songs. And I have access to that. I can do whatever I want there. Let me change directory to pets. And let me look at the data, the tables in there. So there's dogs. All right, and now I'm going to do everything in select everything from dogs. And it says permission denied. So I'm logged in as Swift, and I have only access to the table top songs. I don't have access to this table dogs. I can look at it fine, but I don't have access to it. Finally, um, let me quit out of this. Uh, one last thing I want to show, let me log in again, is the root account here, is, I'll change back into charts. And let's say now, uh, so Petman here is read access. Let's say I want to revoke that and um, just have um, Petman do work with some other database. So the, that command is revoke all, well, it could be anything. I could just say select here, but I'd like on top songs from Petman. And now if I look at what the privileges are here, you see Petman no longer has them. So 
So that's the basics. It's fairly simple uh, to do this. And remember, it's extremely, extremely important. And you don't want to be embarrassed on your first day of your job or your first week of the job and do something kind of stupid. So let me close out of this, just show one more thing. And now what I want to do is uh, just import a file here. Just give me a second. I'm going to up upload a SQL file. Okay, and I did that. I guess I didn't need to get out of this. Oh, I didn't. All right, and now I'm going to import that file. Whoops, maybe if I can type here. Sorry. Uh, world.sql. And this is going to go for a long time. Sometimes on some computers it seems like it's locked up, but it is low. It's a modest sized database. There, and now I'm in world. And remember, I'm just reviewing some basic commands here. We can look at the tables in world. So we have city, the sequence, uh, country and country language. I can see what the table city looks like. So it has a name, a country code, a district, and population. Let me search for a city here just to select from city. Oh, sorry, select everything. Where name e equals Albuquerque. Okay, so there is a simple select statement. Um, I see this district is um, this actual state, so I can do, let me get everything from Arizona, select blank from city where district equals Arizona. Okay, and I get all the cities in Arizona, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's take a look at the tables again. Okay, we have a country table there. Let me describe that. Oh, there's a lot more information. Uh, here's life expectancy. Let me get countries that have a big life expectancy here. I just hit Q to get out of that display. Uh, select, and there was a lot of uh, columns there in that database. So let me just pick... Um, I don't remember if it was name. Let me take a look at it again. Yep, it's the name is the name of the country. So I'm going to go select name and life expectancy, if I can spell it, from country where ah. is greater than 80. And these are the countries we want to be in if we want to live a long time. All right, so I just wanted to give an, a quick example of something we already have done, but just kind of a reminder. The basic part of this video was all about privileges. And it seems, I'm hoping that it seems simple enough that you can implement. Take care.